talk to you all about so many different things here on Soapy Oaks Farm, but one of the things we've never discussed are the rocks. <laughs> there are rocks all over my land here. Very large. Some of these, well here, there's some over here in the woods you can see that are rather large. As a matter of fact, under this one, that's rabbits living under there, under this larger one here. You'll see a bigger one over there. I've sat on that one many times. <laughs> it's a nice big rock. But they're just kind of scattered about here on the land. Um, you'll see right there, under the earth, there are some rocks. It's very rocky here. And does that make growing things and gardening somewhat of a challenge? It can. <laughs> it truly can. But I love them. They are from the earth. They are pushing up through here through some kind of magic. <laughs> the, you know, the shifting of the earth and they start coming to the surface. I just, I'm amazed by that. My lawnmower, <laughs> when I've used them in the past, is not a fan of rocks. But, you know, we deal with what we have to. Hi, Rosie. Hi, pretty girl. Well, come on, <laughs> what are you doing? Come on out and say hi. Come on, Rose. Barry won't bother you, come on. Hi, Rose. Hi, pretty girl. How's my beautiful girl? Well, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. It's my pretty Rose. Say hi. Okay. Barry, Rose is getting some of your attention over here. <laughs> All right, so why am I talking about rocks today? Because I'm going to make a stone soap that is inspired by my rocks here, meaning it'll have more reddish, sort of blackish and brown tones, I hope, and will be something that you enjoy. So let's get to work on that. Barry? Barry! Barry! Oh, well, he's interested in a cricket or something, so we're going to go inside and start to work on our soap. Here we go. So, for the colors, I'm going to be using activated charcoal, a natto seed, cocoa powder, and Gromwell. I'm hoping by the amounts that I've put in each of these cups that I'll get just the colors I'm wanting to create something similar to the stonework. I'm not sure the stonework, I mean to the stones. <laughs> Whether or not I will be able to accomplish that, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh, before. This is the hemp oil that I'm adding. When you're adding hemp oil, I want to suggest that you add it in very small quantities to your soap, no more than two, 3% tops. A couple of good reasons. Uh, first of all, it raises the iodine level substantially in your soap, but perhaps even more importantly for those of us that make soap, it creates a softer soap, a soap that will dissolve quicker a soap that won't last very long, even if you add salt and other things to it. Hemp oil tends to create a very soft soap. All right. If you use too much, I mean. All right. So let's get our milk added in here with our sea salt and aloe vera. So, the hemp also 
is great if you want a green soap, <laughs> but if you're not going for a green soap, it can be a little tricky. Now the essential oils that I'm using here, oop, I almost dropped that, is Litsia and Bergamot. Just a great citrusy, kind of an exotic citrusy fragrance that I really like. Now I'm not going to hit this with the stick blender much. I just want to get it started and then I'll do the rest with a whisk because I want to try to keep this thin because I'm going to try a different kind of a pour. Oh, that smells beautiful. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to over mix this yet. I'm going to take a whisk to it. If you don't have a large whisk, get yourself one. They're fantastic. They're very inexpensive. But they're great for things like this when you just want your, your soap emulsified, but you don't want it too thick. This is one soap. This what I'm about to do here that we don't want to bring to trace. I'm going to divide this up actually a couple of times as you'll see here assuming this plan works I'm going to pour them a little full not too full but All right, now I'm gonna mix these very gently. And this scrum well will lighten quite a bit as will the Anato okay. cocoa I meant. All right. It has kind of a green tint, but that will change back when the soap uh, starts to cure overnight. So as I stated, I'm going to be doing a different kind of pour here using a untraditional tool. So let me get my mold. I should say my first mold. All right, so here's our first stone mold here. So here's my untraditional pouring tool here. I'll explain this in just a moment. Let, let me get this poured first because I do want to be quick about this. This is going to be a messy soap too. I can tell that already.
Go. Sorry I'm being so quiet, but I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, and I'm a little nervous. And I want to move quickly enough. So that it doesn't end up all setting up on me before I can get these poured. Because I have six more of these to pour. <laughs> so I'm a little nervous. Oh, I over poured that one. Okay. <laughs> Guess I shouldn't have done that. Should oh, no, I shouldn't do that. Okay. It's the only problem with these kind of little molds. Okay. So I'm going to stop so I don't mess those up any further. And I'm going to get to pouring the rest of them. All right. So I did put these in the freezer for just a bit. Make them a little easier to come out of the mold. What do you think? Okay. Pebbly, stone like, what do you think? <laughs> Probably should have used some red clay just to bring out a little bit more of the red color because I'm not really getting that. I do like the orange from the turmeric or from the annatto, excuse me. And I like the bluish purple from the Grumwell. But I, th I think they're fun. Uh, I think that pour really helped to distribute the colors more evenly by using that pour. And I'm working with the guy who made that actually to make a larger one. And once I do that, I'm hoping to be the exclusive uh, seller of those. But I'll tell you more about that in an upcoming video because I think it's something that a lot of folks might like. All right. Ooh, I kind of smashed that one a little bit there. The trick is to make sure that you get an air space when you're pulling them out of the mold like so. My hands aren't wet. It's that these just came out of the freezer. <laughs> so there is a little moisture on the outside as it begins to thaw. I just wanted to make sure that they came out nice and 
smooth. Now I will spray these with alcohol uh, so that they get a nice gloss on top. And I'll go ahead and get the rest of these unpacked and or un unmolded I should say. These will be in the store in October, late October. And um, I'll go ahead and get the rest of these done. I really appreciate you all sticking with me and getting stoned with me. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye. <laughs>